Good evening, folks. This is uh, Dr. Paul. Thank you very much. And uh, the news is that I am moving my office from Science Park Road to uh, Hills Plaza. Okay, so from September one, my office will be in Hills Plaza. If you need an appointment, make an appointment for the Hills Plaza office from September first. Before September first, I will be available at the Science Park Road. Today I want to talk a few minutes about gallstones. Gallstones, I mean, even though they sound so scary, they are basically hardened deposits of cholesterol. They are not like made up of some stony material. They are basically made up of cholesterol, little bit of calcium, little bit of protein, little bit of mucin. They are broadly classified as cholesterol stones and pigment stones. Pigment stones can be classified as either black or brown. About 80% of gallstones are cholesterol stones. Parasitic infection with Ascaris lumbricoides or Chronicus sinensis can cause brown stones. So when you see brown stones, think about parasitic infections with Ascaris or Chronicus sinensis. Then the typical patient with gallstones is female who is on a high dietary fat intake. They say it's FFF, female in 40s with fatty diet. So, and also fecundity, that means like she has prior pregnancies. There are certain risk factors for gallstones, female sex, increased age, pregnancy, diabetes mellitus rapid weight loss, obesity, and certain medications. And uh, ethnicity-wise, Native Americans and Hispanics. In uh, Native Americans, Pima Indians, they are at high risk for gallstones. Rapid weight loss following bariatric surgery or lifestyle changes can precipitate gallstone formation. I have one patient who got uh, gallstones after bariatric surgery. And the prognosis is excellent with cholecystectomy. And now, what is the relationship between cholecystectomy and cancer? What is the risk of cancer? Uh, after cholecystectomy, the risk of esophageal, proximal, small intestinal, and colonic adenocarcinomas, it is increases because there is increased duodenogastric reflexes and changes in intestinal exposure to bile. So remember that after cholecystectomy, the cancer risk will go up because basically you have changed that bile atmosphere in the intestines. That's very important. And all these years we have heard that because gallbladder is a vestigial organ, you don't need it, get rid of this. And surgeons were removing gallbladders for every small reason in the world. And what happened? We have more and more people having intestinal cancers. You see folks, there is a purpose for every organ. God put every organ in human body for a purpose. Don't call them vestigial and useless. If you have a gallbladder, keep it because the risk of cancer has not increased. But if you have a cholecystectomy, then there is a high risk of cancer. And complications of gallstones, acute cholecystitis, obstructive choledocolithiasis, uh, basically like a, a gallstone is leaving the cystic duct and it is going into the common bile duct. And you see the bile is a sterile fluid. There is no bacteria in the bile. But when the stone is there, when it is obstructing the common bile duct, this bile is, uh, uh, it is sludging up. And the bacteria can grow in that bile and can cause cholangitis. And some suppurative cholangitis is actually a emergency. It's a surgical or endoscopic emergency. So you do not take uh, these stones uh, less seriously. 
and also when the stone gets impacted near the ampulla of water it can also cause pancreatitis calstonilius when the stone uh, goes into the intestines and also it blocks the intestines